Um, <clears throat> this is our audit committee um, ready to convene the meeting. I, normally we do the pledge at the beginning of every meeting. Julie, if I might suggest this is one way audio taping. Yes. You might ask them when you speak to say their name first. Okay. Yeah, we did the introductions, but we did them off the record, so to speak. So that's a good idea. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So the, I, I'm sorry that everyone doesn't have a copy. I sh uh, next time I will be more prepared. I was kidding about my week and just didn't even occur to me to print off extra copies. Um, so the first thing on the agenda is to adopt the minutes from the old audit committee. Um, obviously none of us were members of the committee previously. So I would just move to adopt the minutes as they are without prejudice. Um, if, there are issues that come up later, we can deal with them. Um, do I have a second on that? Barney Kraus, a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion, the minutes are passed. So I sent out uh, an email to the new audit committee members about kind of the, the charter sections and um, other things that have been, you know, kind of what the goal is of the audit committee. Um, I hope everyone had a chance to read those and go over those, uh, kind of what our roles and responsibilities are. Um, does anybody have any questions or want to discuss kind of how we are going about this new, and I, like I said, we're all new, so we're all kind of in. <laughs> it looks like it's mostly yeah. oversight right. to me. Right. And uh, do you intend to meet more than twice a year? Um, I think it's just going to depend on once we get, well, it's going to depend on a lot of things. It's going to depend on the next item on the agenda. Um, if we decide to do an RFP for a new auditor, um, we might have to meet more often because obviously if we do decide to have an RFP out there, we're going to have to review those proposals and decide as a committee who we would choose to be the new auditor. Okay. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I am a, I'm only going to meet because we have to meet. I'm not going to just have us meet just to meet. It's it's a waste of everybody's time sure. and intention. So, therefore, um, it's a lot is going to depend on what we decide here today. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So I think we had gotten these previous. <laughs> these are the draft minutes that we just approved. So we're. They're on. Yeah, okay. we're, we're reporting. I, I started this up. Um, so, if we don't have any questions or discussion about what our roles and responsibilities are, we can move right on to the, the big topic that everybody really wants to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and that is um, whether we're going to hire a new auditor or put out a request for proposals for a new auditor. When is the last time that we did an RFP? Um, I'm not sure when the last time the RFP was, but we've had this this auditor for the last five fiscal years, is my understanding. I think 2013. Okay, so yeah. Okay. So so for five years we've had the current auditor. Um, and I'm just going to open it up now, unless the committee members have any initial um, ideas, I'm going to open it up to public comment. Anybody? Uh, I know I, I, I will say that I don't I know I did I don't know if the committee members it, it seemed like it was addressed to the committee but I got a couple emails this morning Me too. Yes. Um, okay then so it did come to all the committee members I didn't look at the um, about reasons for um, from Jeffrey Smith and from Diane I forget her last name Diane. thank you are you asking for public comment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. So um, I did get we did get emails as a committee about um, some from some people about their views about why we should get um, do an RFP to get a new auditor. But yes, and I am opening it up for public comment. Is this on? Or does it matter? It should be. It should be. On? If it's not, we can carry it. Uh, well, Diane Hansen. Um, for um, background for the new members, I'm a former mayor, but was also the secretary of the former audit committee. Um, 
I would strongly recommend you put out an RFP for the auditor. Um, I think that it's practice to change auditors on a, a regular basis for obvious reasons, whether you get the team involved or whatever, I don't know. But I think also we've paid a lot of money to this particular firm, and I'm not sure we got value for that money. Um, so I would, I would just strongly recommend that you put out an RFP and get a new one. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dan. Anyone else? Yeah, I agree with Diane. And I guess my question would be, uh, these people seem to be overcharging us, and they seem to be not doing a thorough job. So what, I mean, it, it seems to me, I'm not really tuned in to do with final picks that much, but <laughs> let's put something out there and see if we can right. find somebody better. Okay. Um, anyone else? I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Um, is the timing of it. Uh, and granted, we got started a little later than I would have liked, um, but it just, it worked out that way. And with the holidays and then me trying to make, put my ducks in the row to get us here to where we are today, um, is that the fiscal year ends the end of March. So doing an RFP for a new audit auditor for this fiscal year could be a tight, it's a tight timeline. Um, so the thought had occurred to me to stick with the current auditor for this fiscal year, but over the course of the, of the next few months, we as a committee could put out a real a strong RFP and get some, have some time to get a lot of different proposals for the next fiscal year. I understand. So that was... So Just for the, the benefit of everybody, there's two separate things that TGM did last year. TGM did financial. Say for the record, who you are. For the uh, report. Scott Cohen. Sorry, thanks, Scott. Scott, <laughs> Scott Cohen. <Cunningham. laughs> I know who you are, but. <laughs> Sorry, for the report. Thanks. Uh, TGM performed several different services last year for the town and, and two separate issues. One, they've audited the town's financial statements, I believe, the last five fiscal years or so. And that expense is roughly, I think this year, this past year, the total expense for the audit was about $19,000, 19 dollars or less. So the actual audit of the financial statements is not a large expense. The other task that they were uh, asked to do related to the agreed upon procedures, which um, was a very, I think, complicated discussion. So that cost, it's in the neighborhood of $54,000 for the two tasks. Two separate things. So the, the RFP that you would be doing is for the audited financial statements and audit communications. And so that value should be somewhere $20,000 or less. So I just want to make it, it's two separate things and I would mm -hmm. prefer that they not get commingled together. And so, there were people that had expressed unhappiness with the AVP. I don't know that anybody expressed happiness or unhappiness with the financial statements. They, they were accepted by the commissioners. So. Uh, one clarification, Scott. Was it 54 inclusive of the 19? No. 19 separate. plus 54. Okay. Yeah, separate. So the actual audit bill was about a little over $19,000. The AUP, the, all phases of the AUP, which is phase one and phase two, was I think in the neighborhood of fifty-four, fifty-five thousand dollars. Okay, Scott, the um, the independent auditing. Firm, yes. Uh, I understand that they review the financials, but they also are are tasked or available to deal with other issues as circumstances dictate. Right. Yeah, absolutely. They they would be available for any additional tasks that right. the town would or the committee would ask for. So yes. Well, and Scott, it might be helpful for you to explain because I, I learned this from you when we met a couple weeks ago. But the difference between our auditor audit group versus our accounting group. Great. So, so we have two separate orders right now, or, or our engagement letters. The commissioners just recently uh, approved what was called core accounting and uh, basically monthly support on. Accounting services. So uh, Luffin Associates does all of that work. So the the month to month accounting support, in addition to the office staff and the re the, the reviewing of bank reconciliations and all that is done by Luffin Associates. 
the contract for that was it was thirty thousand dollars to do a, a core accounting improvement function for us, and then it's uh, twenty five hundred dollars a month from now through next fiscal year. So through the FY twenty twenty fiscal year, I think we we approved the, the monthly accounting and the core. Luff also gets paid for uh, payroll processing, but it's under another banner called the Easy Payroll. And what Luff is doing in addition to, part of Luff's task is to improve all of our processes and get, the, the goal is to get to the end of next fiscal year so that on March 31st of, 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 of 20, Basically, all of our work papers for the audit is prepared and ready to turn over to the auditor very within 30 days, so the audit can begin by what is that April 30th of, of 20. We've in the past had a longer period of time before all of our work papers and stuff is ready for the auditors to come in. So one of their goals is to shorten that time, uh, and and so. We just need to be prepared if we if we change auditors that Luff is going to not know exactly, every, every auditor is a little bit different. They may do things in different sequence. Uh, they may ask for different type of work information. They're, they, they're testing, I think they have to do the same kind of means testing, but their approach may be different. So uh, if we change, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna be adjusting. If, or do you I think, that I think the only, would say I don't think it's going to increase our cost. It might take a little longer for them to prepare the information if they're asking for it in a different format or something. I don't think it changes the account because the numbers are still the numbers. It, it's just right. a matter of if they're presenting them to the auditors in the way that they want it to be presented. Right. So um, if you go forward with the RFP and selecting the auditors, um, the sooner that they know who the auditor is, the better. So that it, it doesn't extend the timeline, uh, because I'm not sure when our other audits were finished completely. I have to go back and look at the dates. But so this past year was August third before we were able to meet with it. Um, I think the goal, like I said, we're not auditing a whole lot of money. It's it's three and a half million dollars, and so the hope, to be quite honest, is as we get the core accounting functions and the work papers more defined and uh, better prepared that from March 31st until we receive our audit is a lot less time and, and there's hopefully in the long run fewer dollars associated with it by cutting down the time that's necessary for the auditor to actually spend on it. Yeah. Commissioner David Moskowitz, and I'm a CPA as well. Uh, I feel the current auditor with is not up to par. He missed two off balance sheet accounts. Then, as a result, the town ended up spending 400 grand for a lawyer, lawyer uh, Walton, to investigate that and other issues. So it wasn't just that. And then the town basically went to the auditor, did agreed upon procedures. They spent another 63,000, and from those reports, not much was done. And I, I just think choosing your own guy, whoever it is in the yellow pages, would be a plus. It's your, your guy, you help move Dewey forward, you'd be looked at as heroes. Uh, the other thing is the Lux, uh, 60,000 the town is spending towards having Lux customize the systems. They might as well be customizing it for the auditor for the next five years, not just customizing it for the old auditor and then basically paying additional money as the chair alluded to with that. And then I, I spoke to uh, TJ, uh, sorry, the mayor, Commissioner Cook, and the town manager and I had a county dinner on sometime in December, <coughs> and we were actually inadvertently seated next to an audit company, and they said, since you already have an accounting person, uh, which is Lux, they, they would need to just know by sometime in April to be able to take the assignment, so that would be your timeline, I'm, I'm assuming. So you would have two months. So if I may make a comment on that, um, as a CPA, you know that the audit is the responsibility of management. It's not the auditor's responsibility to put forth the statements, right? Y yes, but he should be doing risk assessment and there, basically 
but it's, they are looking at the fairness of what has been presented by management. They're not hired to uncover <coughs> accounts. Is that correct? Correct, but uh, in this regard, he should have done some sample. Not should, he could have, but it's not part of the audit process. So the thing here is that an auditor will go through the process of going through each of the accounts and making sure that they reconcile and tie as of that point in time. It is not necessarily the responsibility to do a, an, an investigative report. I'm not saying that we don't do an RFP because I do think we have enough time mm -hmm. if the committee believes that, it, that we have. And there's enough local firms that could perform the audit for us. Um, I would assume that we, um, we have no debt so there is no bank requirements. So purely it's a city requirement as to when it needs to be completed by. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? Charter. We, we Charter. do have that. Um, and uh, the requirement is by code charter. OK. Yeah. So my knowledge, we only, Scott, we only have one debt. And that's a debt to, uh, on a loan to DENREC. Um, and that, that does not trigger when our audit would necessarily okay. have done. We just have to... Usually there's a bank requirement <coughs> by a certain date, or there could be a bank requirement. By a we, we do. As far as I know, we don't have such a condition. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Don Alexander, in the past when you were putting um, these bids out, approximately how long did it take? You know, like we're saying, we have to have it by the end of March. How long was it in the past? A month, two months before you got proposals in? I'll try this one. Um, <coughs> <laughs> the last RFP we did. Your name and where you get the name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep it right from Eric Baby. Um, just Houston Street. Um, uh, the last RFP we did, uh, and quite frankly, I don't know if RFPs have always been done as tightly as they should be done. The last RFP we did, we did as appropriately as we possibly could, and it was for the beach hats. Um, it took three or four months before all the bids came in and we were able to evaluate them and open the sealed bids and go over them and then pick the, the vendor that we selected. Uh, your chair has suggested a, a, a reasonable approach. I think you could begin the RFP process now, allow Luff and Associates and the current um, auditor to complete this fiscal year and have it all set up going into the next year with Luff and Associates well aware of who you're working with and the new auditor being right on step with what we need to do to do the job smoothly, easily, and without taking unreasonable uh, reaction to do something immediately that doesn't, you know, I mean, I, I, I think your chair is wise in um, taking that time to do it right. That's I, and that's, that was kind of my point. I would rather see us take some time, you know, rather than putting out an RFP for 30 days, you know, and, and get bids in 30 days and try to rush to a conclusion. You know, maybe it is something worth, because it's a big issue. It's a it's a huge issue for the town. Um, and everyone seems to be brought up about it. I would rather do it, take my time and do it right, than rush and then come to the wrong conclusion. And then we're kicking ourselves a year from now, saying we just, we hired, we hired a, a, an agency, or a, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a company that we're not happy with after one year. Um, but that's, that's me. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a prosecutor, I look at the evidence, I wanna, I, so, you know, I don't take a case to trial unless I can prove it. And so Julie, what is the it. next step in terms of this committee? Should we have so, a vote on? Well, the decision is, do we put an RFP out for this fiscal year? Do we uh, have a motion to put it for this fiscal year? Or do we have a motion to put an RFP for, uh, or any other? I mean, I'm not closing comments yet, but I think that's kind of the process. We either okay. decide we're gonna, someone's gonna make a motion to put an RFP out to hire a new firm for this fiscal year or for next fiscal year? I'll make a motion to hire. Wait, wait I don't think we're closed oh. with comments yet. Mm -hmm. I just have one question, Lisa Levine. If we put an RFP out and we find that in six months, do we have to wait the whole uh, another whole year and keep TGM, or can we just jump in in six months if we find somebody that we really like? Well, I think that's my point: is okay. that we put a that we. Go ahead we don't and have to wait till next. No, March. no, no, no. We as, we issue an RFP now, yeah. but not for this fiscal year. For next fiscal year, Start so we meeting. take our time to find, get good proposals, get, you know, and even if we pick them in April and say, okay, you're our guys for the next for the next fiscal year. But then we have but to. But then wait, they will. We, we have to wait that full year. Sure. Until they, they won't be our. They they won't do the audit until the next fiscal year. But we can hire them. But we can't have now. them come in 
in six yeah in a six month instead of no, a can. twelve month no we can oh, and say okay. okay you're going to be our guys for next fiscal year what do you need this these are our accountants okay. what you know what are you looking for from left of associate like how do you want these things done so that it helps you right. and helps them okay. um, so that's that's the way I'm looking at it I you know but are there any other comments public committee members let me let me see if yes commissioner I did. Give me off of commission. I just wondered how is it written on your agenda? I forgot to get on it. How I good point. wrote it as is it written as a vote or I said discussion and possibly vote on timetable for our fiscal nineteen audit and feasibility of preparing an RFP for alternative audit companies. So I, I kinda it was kind of a general <laughs> Yeah. Um, let me check and see if Debbie has any Debbie, do you have any comments? Um, no. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make sure I kind of want to. I mean, we're, we all live in a big city. No. And for down here, this is a nice little piece of work uh, for someone who's going to be right. going to be independent auditor. Uh, when I was in practice, if a client came to me and said, I need this by such and such a date, and it was a quick timeline, well, we're working Saturdays and Sundays and nights and whenever we have to. Oh, yeah. So. If somebody really wants this piece of work, uh, they'll get they'll get it done by March thirty first. Yeah. I, no, I see your point. I mean, I, obviously, I know I bring work home on weekends all the time. Sure. But if I'm getting ready for a trial, it's just the way it does. You, mm -hmm. you do the work when you need to do the work. Um, I'm just trying to, like I said, just kind of proposing another alternative. Okay. Scott. Yeah. Scott's getting his steps in today. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in the front row. <laughs> once, you, once you select them, you can do it that way. Um, there are some that have, have sent it out asking for a price. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily against the law or anything like that to ask for a price right away. But some won't because they'll say, well, we need to sit down and negotiate the tasks once you select us. So, um, but the timeline that we're talking about, our work as far as staff and Luff, the, the, the timeline closes on March 31st, and then we have to turn something over either 30 days, 60 days later to an auditor. I, I, I mean, I actually was, I worked for a management consulting firm my first year out of law school. I didn't actually work as a lawyer because um, nobody would hire me right out of law school. Well, I moved to Georgia from Indiana, and nobody knew who the heck I was. So, <laughs> not surprising. But um, so I actually, got my job because I helped do written responses to RFPs um, to get jobs. And actually, we landed one of the jobs that I wrote the response for. And so my boss said, hey, come on, come on board. So, um, so I, I do appreciate the extent of the time. And us, the last request, the art, last RFP for the audit for an auditor was this, was one page. Yep. Uh, it was basically they had two auditors and from what I've seen from Kick Gazette and Minutes, uh, the current auditor at that time and the one they eventually chose TGM and but if you do do an audit just one caveat, most auditors will ask for like a three year contract. So just understand that th th that's how they usually do. They'll do like three years at X amount. Well, and that's part of the, my concern too is rushing into somebody, somebody new is that if we rush, are we really examining the qualifications appropriately? Because um, it's a knee-jerk reaction to just get rid of TGM versus, hey, let's find somebody who's the best for the town. So, so I was what I was going to say. So this was our last <coughs> RFP from editor. This is Fenwick's RFP, which is from last. It's about ten, uh, six or seven pages, and then you've got Dover, which Dover obviously is a much bigger. Yeah. I mean, it's. Multiple pages. Yeah, Scott right, was right. kind enough to forward these all on to me. Um, <clears throat> I don't want our RFP to look like this. I mean, I just don't. I think we're. Yes. Debbie. Yes, Debbie. Did you hear that? Did you guys all hear that? Yeah. 
Uh, sorry. Basically, Debbie said, what if we wait and on an RFP for next fiscal year, what do we do for this year with TGM to address the concerns that people have over their, their performance so far? Do you have any thoughts on that, Scott? Um, again, no one has complained to me about the financial statements. There was discussion about the AUP, these off-books accounts, but, but those were not the auditor's initial charge. The auditors always ask, you know, is there anything that we need to know? And somebody didn't tell them so. So, uh, again, outside of the AUP, I don't know that there was any complaint specifically about um, the audit of the financial statements itself. There were some questions, uh, you know, in the audit communications about how do you address um, Duties and, and so you don't have, so you reduce reduction of conflicts and, and things like that where, where the audit communications and the audit opinions <coughs> but those were that, that's the duty of the auditor to point those out and it's our duty to try to minimize those or fix those or correct them so I and, and anybody who's a commissioner can step in and say I didn't have any issues with TGM with respect to the financial numbers are the numbers and and so um, that's how I okay. see it. Debbie does that answer your question? Um, I think I'm, I'm not sure. I just want to make one quick comment. I've known TGM. I, I started my career as an auditor um, back in 89 and so I've known <coughs> some of the people that are at TGM for a very long time. I can tell you the quality of individuals. Um, I don't think that, and again, I think the issue was kind of what Scott said, the issue might have been the agreed upon procedures, not the financial audit. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't want to think that we should look at an RFP process because I think it's, it's responsible right. for us to do that. But maybe just to Scott's point, not this year because the amount of work that needs that. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I, TJ, Mayor. Um, I think Debbie's questions are what if we need audit services between here and there? Mm -hmm. And I think you still have TGM until you hire a new company. And if you put it out for audit or for bid, and in March and April you get the proposals, and in uh, May or June it gets to the commissioners and we approve it, you're quickly going to have a new company that you can call on for any audit services that you might feel are necessary. Also, I think Scott alluded to the point that um, the accounts that you're mentioning that were not missed before, um, they were missed because they didn't know about them. And, there, if, uh, and I think what you're saying is that they should have applied some tests or something to find those accounts. And for one reason or another, that didn't happen. But that's TGM, I believe, and, and, and those two accounts have nothing to do with the AUP either. Those two accounts have more to do with previous audits from the past, not the current audit. Well, they were not part of the AGP. Well, they yeah, became, that's uh, yes. talking back and forth. Yeah, it's not a conversation, but it, it, it became part of the AUP, and those accounts were discovered then, and there, there is no question that the town had control over those accounts through all of those years that they just didn't get reported accurately. So I, I hear what you're saying, uh, but I think uh, you're pointing a finger at TJ, TGM as the responsible party for the lack of... Uh, of uh, knowing everything that was going on in our town at the time, and quite frankly, a lot of people didn't know what was going on in our town at that time, and it's time for it to stop. And I'm with you guys. I, I, we need to get to the bottom, and we need to get the answers to all the questions. So I get a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's appropriate to take the proper cautious steps, get the right people to represent the town, and let's find everything we need to find to make sure we never go back where we were before right. and do this right. Well, that's to my point, is that I don't want, you know, for us to put together an RFP, it's going to take some time, and, because I don't, it, nothing for me is going to look like this. I'm sorry, it's just not who I am. <laughs> no, I'm a lawyer. It's who I am. Um, so, I, I just want us to do it right. Um, you know, I'm, we can, we can try to push the timetable, but I just think we're doing a disservice to the town by trying to push it ahead quickly. Yeah, Bernie? Bernie, just, just quick. Uh, comment. I've been on both sides of the acquisition process. If 
you go, what I hear, get it out quick and dirty, you're not going to get what you want. So what I'm hearing is this RFP that went out earlier didn't really lay out what was expected of the company. That's what the process is supposed to do. Here's what I expect you to do. And if it's not there, you can't blame the order. Mm -hmm. right. This is not related to the RFP, but to... Well, Commissioner... Where are you from? David <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Is it the on the microphone? So yeah. this is not related to the RFP, but to answer Debbie's question, there was an issue with the financial statement. There's always an investment committee chair, and now Bill is going to be on the investment committee. But the investment committee manages four point five million for the and the auditor thought he found an issue, but he misread the report. No one contacted the investment committee. There was like no communications. I go to the meeting and then I basically find out there's questions and it, it was stuff that he read the report wrong and the key bill was labeled as cash and stuff. So it was the auditor's mistake. Then at the meeting he's like, I will follow up with you right away. No follow-up. I, I get a random call in mid-September uh, to answer questions. So my concern is to answer Debbie's question, you need to keep him on a short leash. Make sure any issues he has, he gets followed up right away. It, that's the one issue. It seemed like he didn't follow up on issues. The investment committee, 4.5 million. And he, he just had a lazy type of approach. And someone who was more proactive, it was a public meeting on August 17th, I should have been followed up the next day. I get a call randomly at the end of September, right the day before he has to meet with Scott, the town manager, which was just like last minute. So just, just keep a short leash on him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Chesapeake. Uh, can you tell the elections might be coming up this year? <laughs> From the whole town. <laughs> uh, I would just urge the committee be careful what you say pro or con about any any uh, company that the town employs because uh, you really don't know for sure even some of the commissioners don't know for sure about good or bad good work bad work or whatever so i would i would if i were you i'd take everything with a grain of salt and understand that i took this job with a grain of salt <laughs> <laughs> understand that some commissioners feel that they were shorted. Some commissioners feel that, that the company did a great job. But I didn't see anybody say, stop the whole thing, you're not doing a good job. So. Well, I, thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. And that's, I guess that's where I'm coming from, is that, it's like Scott said, as far as the numbers, the numbers are the numbers are the numbers, and the audit committee did what they were supposed to do, or the audit, the auditor did what they were supposed to do. Um, I, anyway. I'm just going to stop yeah. there. Just going to stop there. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, right here loud, not here. Gary, uh, Commissioner Goodrich. Um, just a reminder, you know, if you don't get through with an RFP, you do have the option of rotating the department mm -hmm. with a different department within the firm, so just keep that in mind. That's it. That's, That's it. Very good point, Gary. Thank you very much. Any other comments by the group or the public? <laughs> Does anybody have a motion? Julie, I, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I'm new to this, obviously. And, uh, Are we? Uh, if, we uh, if we don't put out an RFP by March 31st, because it's it's just it's it's too quick a timeline. Mm -hmm. How long do we end up living with TGM? I think we live with TGM for this fiscal year, and we put out an RFP for next fiscal year, but we do it yeah. deliberately. We start it. We start the process now. We start. You know, I'll, I've got some templates to work from. We can, as a committee, we can discuss what our RFP should look like, but we do it deliberate and we make sure it's, it looks good. It's, we have the right qualifications. We have the right things that we want to see done for the town. Um, and we don't rush into anything. And, and so by hopefully midsummer, you know, TGM would be doing the audit for this year and they'll have it out by August as they have in the past or at least they did this last year. Um, but we have the RFP in place so that we know that next year we're going to, and you know, who knows? We could have an RFP and TGM might win yeah, it again. Say, the the yeah. RFP process is yeah. not going to be complicated from the standpoint after this audit's done, a firm will come in, look at that audit report that's been 
and look at the what's what are the internal statements and determine how much work we're going to have right. to do. So we we have to get through this audit anyway, right? Before we went into the RFP process, and like you said, TGM might be the, the best firm that comes forward right. after that audit process. We don't know that right now. Yeah, I mean, there's no we're not going to disqualify them just right. because people have been unhappy with them in the past. Why is it that? Um... And like Dale, and like sorry, like Harry said, we can have a different partner. Yeah, that's fine. Be headed. We can make that as a requirement. Right. How is it that they were not um, provided with all the relevant information? That's a great question. <laughs> How are they not provided? How are they not provided with all the relevant information? Well, that mm -hmm. they, they're yeah. Product, they only yeah. are provided with what the town provides them with. So that's on the, that's on the town. It's not on the auditors. Do all the commissioners speak at this? <laughs> no, yes. no, 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 no. Oh, it's just so <laughs> it's just so special. We are so special. I mean, this is stuff that drives me nuts. Who are you? Paul Bauer. Okay, Mark. Flint Street. Anyway, the last one. These are the things that drive me nuts. So, you know, I'm hearing that we're unhappy with the TGM. What are we unhappy? With? What What have we heard? And I'm sitting back here. I've sat through watching this audit get approved year over year. No town problem. Do we have a problem with the AUP or do we have a problem with the audit? Right. Which, I, don't, I don't know which one you're talking about. Well, the CPA here, you, you indicated you had a problem with the audit itself. Yes. Yeah, the audit itself. Okay. How many years? Well, they missed it for a few years. And how long have they been here? Five. You think that information was provided to them? Honestly? Well, but that's why you sample risk. They're, they're but, sure. but, but we shouldn't be talking. Okay, let's not get into a back and forth. There is, um, but the And bringing budget and finance back, everything went above the line. So that was step one. Uh, step two is we outsourced to Luffin Associate, the accounting firm, to do the books for. So it's not done in-house anymore. Some of it is, but for the most part, it's done out of that building. So you're detaching the accounting function from the political crap that sometimes goes on around. So, excuse my, you know, you keep using the same word, but you know, you keep hearing the same garbage here time and time again, you get tired of it. So, anyhow, if there is an issue with TGM, this is the first I'm hearing about it. You can have an issue with their audit capabilities. People, some people didn't like the results of the AUP. That's a fact. But they found the accounts. They searched the police. They searched the names and every police officer. They found the stuff. So, to me, I think they did a great job. The people are running around saying they're terrible, they're awful. Let's get a new one. Let's fire the guy. So, don't fire the person. If he deserves, if he or she deserves to be fired, then you fire him. But if he doesn't deserve it, he or she doesn't deserve it on rumor and innuendo, then don't do it. Paul, <coughs> if you just also remind yeah. me, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gap, gap principles had to be brought back too, because uh, we didn't use a gap standard to run our books. What's that? Generally accepted accounting principles. I'm sorry, I'll come up here. <laughs> the above the line, below the line system was not a gap style in the county. And, and that's what we, we, the, we were recommended. What we had to do each year is take the above the line, below the line books, move them over into the um, gap uh, system so that the, the, the accountant or the, um, I'm sorry, the uh, auditor could actually do the audit. Um, and and uh, several years in a row, we recommended that we stop doing that way. And, and but the town at that time, it seemed like a better way to go because they didn't want to tell every time uh, a big piece of money came in from the Hyatt, they didn't want that above the line. They wanted to make sure that was put aside, so we didn't spend it foolishly. So the, I think there are good reasons why they implemented this program. It just is not generally accepted accounting practices. So. Part of what we did, and to your bigger question, was making sure we got away from the above the line, below the line system, making sure the accountant saw everything in the AUP, and then start working on generally accepted accounting principles so that we could do this right moving forward, so that I don't care who you guys pick, quite frankly, um, it will be straight. Um, sorry. Anyone else have any comments? Just two procedural things. One is if you're gonna do it for next year, you should get it done by August 1st because your term is over October 11th. The election season starts August 1st. You don't wanna be part of the election season. So I, I would do it before, get it done before. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my plan would be to have it 
to uh, for us, if we're going to do an RFP for next fiscal year, my goal would be to have it out there by first of June so that we can have bids in over the summer. And, and we don't think that's a like season. Yeah, right. And he's not even a, he's, a, he's, he's already he's like a first termer, so he's yeah, so I have, he doesn't have to I'm not up for a look. But and then just the second thing is when they do the audit, you're also looking at an internal controls. So whoever auditor you get chose is internal controls about last year about like segregation of duties and stuff. And there'll be existing ones and new ones this year. So right. you're gonna have to dwell in that whether you like it or not all that fun. Right. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments before I close the discussion? Does anyone have a motion? My yeah. committee members. Hey, hey, it's the six of us here. Deb and Debbie. I'd like to make a motion to have an RFP done for the next fiscal year and keep the current firm in place. We have for this fiscal year. For this fiscal year. Any, a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm discussion. sorry. Can you okay. add, as you had suggested, that we maybe get a fresh set of eyes on this? I'm sorry? Can you add that we get a fresh set of eyes Another from part. Oh, oh right. Yeah. right, right. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, right, that's okay. fine. I just want to make sure it's part of that. We'll make that recommendation. Because you said that. Yeah. Yes. Debbie? Are you? I, I think. I, I just was wondering if you were with us. <laughs> Are we all yeah. we're, with us? So we have a second. All in favor from the committee? All in favor. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Aye. Um, opposed? Two opposed? Okay, so five in favor, two opposed. Well, she can't, her vote can't count. What? Oh, okay. I don't she can participate, but so she can't vote. Four and two. So we're four, four in favor, two opposed. Okay, motion carried. So we're going to look at an RFP. The committee will look at a um, drafting an RFP for the next fiscal year. And, um, Go forward. If in fact there is unhappiness with this TGM firm, right. and they're going to continue with us for a little while, what do you have in mind in terms of, I mean, I know we can change partners. Mm -hmm. um, could we sit down and have a meeting and say these are the areas I, that we're concerned about? I think we definitely can call on TGM and, and invite and have a committee meeting with them present and, mm -hmm. and talk about what we want to see change this for this fiscal year mm -hmm. before we uh, look for new fresh blood for, and like I said, TGA might still be the, the, sure. our best option, I mean, but, but Marty, we Marty, need to know that. Marty makes a good point. I mean, when you do, and, and David kind of touched on this, you'll get a, a review of internal controls, you'll get a uh, conversation around material weaknesses, you'll also get the audit report. They'll let us know why it costs $19,000 for sure. the audit. They'll let us know if there's, um, if they felt like what was provided was incomplete. And so we should take that information in, into consideration. I said, it's the, it's our job, it's the town's job to <coughs> provide the financials. It's the auditors to render an opinion on that. And we're just, as a committee, we're just an advisory board, yep. basically, to the commissioners. So we serve. We just the town. we just do what we think is right and let the commissioners. That's when they make the big bucks, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but 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 you guys have an independence to do what you. Fit. And you can actually, to just to your point, you can actually change order partners this time around if you right. wanted to. Sure. And just you get a preview of what the new guy, maybe you like him and you. Yeah, keep I think him. that was the comment. Yes. That the so, any final comments from the public before I adjourn our meeting? Yeah, we did first. We did just right before you guys walked in. Yes. Oh. We, I know. Sorry. We just we got tired of waiting on you. Know, we didn't know how long it was going to be. No, we already did it. Um, we, didn't, so, we didn't know there was a copy over the starboard. Right. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to yes. adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Debbie, for participating by phone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for supporting the I am.